Happy weekend, everyone. And today I am redoing my last tank that I had on here. Everything is done here. So my animal room is pretty, amphibian room is pretty much done. But uh, this was my barred tiger salamander enclosure. Um, I was using that Universal Rocks background, which is pretty cool. Um, and I had a really cool kind of ledge and cliff wall built up. I really like this. Uh, I'm probably gonna leave it. I was gonna make this entire enclosure terrestrial like I do for my blotch tiger salamanders, but they just love being in the water. So I'm gonna keep this. I am gonna take the background off. I'm gonna do the sides and I'm gonna create like a bog. Like, so I'll have water coming out from where that, that white elbow is. I'm gonna take that off. I'm gonna build a lot more rocks up in here. I took all the slate, uh, the dark slate. I'll still be using slate, but a different color, a lighter color to match more of these rocks. And um, I just gotta clean this up, take the background off, and then I'm gonna do the background um, in the spots where you can see it. And then I'm gonna do the sides as best as I can. And I have to clean this out. Gotta get all those aquatic plants. I've got my salamanders in here, the rest of the plants in here. And the goal, this is a 40 gallon. I was gonna put them in a 75, but I think this is fine. I like the setup for them. They utilize the water, so they're, it's not like they're just staying on the land or anything. Um, but what I'm gonna do is make it more of like a bog. I'm gonna have water flowing out, and I'm also gonna try to have an air stone over here to keep the water moving and have more wood and things like that in here and just kind of keep it um, more, I don't know what the word is, but just kind of have it a little bit more of like a bog. So there is a part for them to get in the water. I, like I said, I wanted to totally get them out of the water, but they just, I take them out, I put them in the land, I find them both in the water. So I'm just gonna kind of stick with this one. And I, I just, you know, I, I wanna use all the, uh, the beneficial bacteria and stuff from the, I don't wanna, have to change this up, they just enjoy it too much. So with that long-winded diatribe done, I am going to rip the rest of the background apart and start to clean it. I don't even know how I'm gonna move it to be honest, but I am gonna try to clean it and I will show you the next step. Well, cleaned, got the background off. Like I said, I'm leaving this land portion, as you can see all the nasty silicone down there, it's all gonna be covered up. I'm gonna try to make sides for this. Uh, hopefully the background won't take too long, but I'm gonna have to do a whole side there, partial here. So I'm gonna have to find some egg crate, silicone it on, let it dry, get that all ready. Um, so it, it's a partial background because there's a lot of, uh, but I actually like this one. Um, I'm gonna put some more egg crate on the bottom. I'm gonna leave that bulkhead, the one on the right, the one that's like a little bit higher, this one. Uh, that's where the water comes out and that's the intake right there. And I use, you know, I don't know where it is. A oh, strainer right here. Low profile strainer, I guess it's called. Um, this is a three quarter inch. So it just kind of screws right into that. And um, like I said, I'm gonna probably not have the water as high anymore. I might have it up to about right at the top of this grayish colored rock. Um, but maybe not even that high to be honest with you. We'll have to see. Um, but uh, yeah, it's cleaned up, uh, looks pretty good. Um, and so, sorry, you can see my reflection. But uh, yeah, I, I kind of want to leave this. Um, so rinsed it out, cleaned it with rubbing alcohol, scraped it, did a pretty good job on the back, got most of that garbage out. Um, the other thing I was gonna say is I can reuse this, which is the false bottom, so I don't need to redo that. I hose that off. Um, so pretty good shape. Um, you know, already have the thing drilled to drain water. Um, so just again, this is just a redo, just gonna make it a lot cooler, I think for the tiger salamanders. And uh, we will let's see how it, it ends up going. Well, here it is. We've got the basic A crate light diffuser stuff, plastic, crisscross, whatever, siliconed everywhere. I uh, hope you don't mind that I don't show this stuff. It's pretty boring. I just cut it. I use these little snippers and then I use the silicone. And I just put it up. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just take pieces. I don't want to waste any. It's like 16, 17 bucks a sheet for this crap. So there it is. And uh, let it dry just for about a half an hour. Um, you don't have to let it dry that long. And then I'm going to be foaming all over it. So, um, you know, I don't really care if it's fully dry. It's still going to cure. It's just going to be foam over it. I'm going to use the 
Uh, great stuff, I'll show you here. Pond and stone, probably talked about these before many times. As you can see, I have a war chest full of things, but uh, this stuff, in my opinion, is the best. I, this stuff is cheap here, the gaps and cracks, and you can use it. Um, and sometimes I use both, but this stuff is made for um, if it's going to be touching water. And it's, in my opinion, actually stickier than the other stuff. So I think I'm going to use that because there's going to be a water section. Uh, here's actually the, the slate that I pulled out. Um, I have more slate in here. I don't think I'm going to use slate. I think I'm going to use some of these rocks here on top. Not the red ones, but these... Uh, you know, lighter colored slate. Um, I think I'm gonna use those in there. Um, and then use some of these river pebbles on the bottom of the substrate, or on top of the substrate, excuse me, and then add some more wood. Um, anyways, all this stuff is these sterilized, FYI, for future videos, if I forget. Um, I have all kinds of rocks, um, driftwood, Malaysian driftwood, branches, um, because I have many more builds coming, as you can see. But anyways, um, let me foam it, and then we can carve it. Okay, here is the Great Stuff Pond and Stone. This was actually three cans for a 40 gallon breeder, believe it or not. That is about almost $30 worth of this stuff. But anyways, just gonna wait for it to dry. It's already getting pretty hard. Um, then I'm gonna start to carve it. I'll give it a few hours for sure. And then I'll carve it up as quickly as I can, which is my least favorite part. Um, you use a uh, wire, brush, wire brush drill bit. And I will do that, and then I will have to dry lock. I'll probably dry lock and paint most of it. Um, I'll probably also use some cocoa fiber for some parts. Uh, I tried to fill in a little bit um, of places where I don't want the animals to go. There's a little spot back there. I mean, actually, what I was thinking is instead of having an air tube, I don't like having a, an air stone here. What I'm going to probably do is fill up this, the, um, oh, you know, this stuff. <laughs> Why can't I think the, uh, the aquatic substrate, I have a lot of it. Um, I'm gonna have a thinner layer over here um, and then I'm gonna build it up over here. So part of this is out of the waters to melt maybe here. Um, so, and again, I'm gonna have less water. Um, I just need uh, the intake to be covered. So we'll see how it is. I, I really just don't feel like doing a, uh, the whole, um, you know, having a, an air stone over here. I think it'll, be nice to have kind of more of a gradual rise over here. Uh, you know, we'll see how it looks, but um, anyways, yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. And just hopefully that the current that will be created from the water shooting out of that will be enough to move the water here. Cause I just don't want it to get stagnant, but uh, yeah, let's, um, let's wait for this to dry and then carve it. All right, really quickly carved it. As you can see, I had a couple spots I had to fill back in with some great stuff, pond and stone. Uh, but for the most part, I uh, cleaned it up. This is the part I hate doing the most. So glad it's over with and I will paint it with dry lock and quick creep tomorrow. I don't think I'm going to need to actually foam in any wood to this. I might. I don't know that I need it looking like pieces coming off the walls. Um, so we'll see. But I actually really do like this setup. I'm glad I'm leaving it. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. I'm going to have a lot of substrate in here. Like I said, it'll be a bog. So I'll uh, show you once I start to quick creep and uh, dry lock. All right, well, <clears throat> time to paint. So I'm using the original gray dry lock, as you can see. Um, and uh, I've got the quick creep. I've got um, buff terracotta, which I'm not even using. I might use that in a little bit. I've got some charcoal, extra charcoal here. And then I've got <laughs> brown. And that's coffee, because I'm trying to wake up. But this is the rock I'm trying to match, the color. So I've mixed, um, I think it's about as close as I can get. And there's some red hues or some brownish hues in here. So um, this is going to be my base coat, and hopefully that'll be enough. Um, and then I'll go back over with some dark spots in the crevices and then lighten it up with uh, probably just some of that on its own and um, some of the... Uh, Maybe terracotta or something mixed with gray. We'll see. I don't know. Um, like a kind of a, a little bit of a dry brush and um, just kind of gently make sure the tips of the protrusions on the foam actually, um, uh, what's the word, uh, get the light 
the, the highlights, so it gives it, gives it a sense of depth. So anyways, um, mixing it up, I'm gonna start painting now and I'll show you what the, product, the finished product looks like. And also what I didn't mention is that I've taped, using painter's tape um, to cover in the intake, outtake, and some of the sides here, just so I don't have too much cleanup and everything else will get painted, so. Um, and then lastly, what I wanted to mention was that I might be taking some cocoa fiber spots and actually putting it in this. I've never tried that before. I'm wondering how it'll turn out, but we'll see. I'll let you know. Paint, meaning the dry lock and the quick crete is done. As you can see, I did it. Um, probably hard to see through the glass, um, but there's white, or that's no, not white, it's gray on the top. I, I, what I did was I did that whole thing I mentioned. I painted it uh, one coat and then I painted it, I kind of made it darker and then um, with just kind of uh, dabbing it. And then what I did was I dry brush technique, I guess, I don't know what it's called. Um, I painted like you can see there with just kind of a straight gray dry lock and it makes it look, give it depth. Really happy with the way this turned out. I mean, it's not exact, but it's pretty close. Which I had some greens um, as well. I think I could make it look really cool, but um, pretty happy with this. So, liking the way this one turned out. So I'm just gonna let it dry. I used um, something to dry it. That's right. I used my wife's blow dryer. Excuse me, one of my wife's blow dryers to get it dry quicker. And it worked nicely. Um, I think it actually saved me an entire 24 hours of time. I, it took me about 30 minutes, but I dried it and uh, it's pretty dry now. I'm gonna let it just kind of continue to dry and cure a little bit overnight. And I think tomorrow I'm just gonna plant it, um, you know, put the substrate back in and just kind of wrap it up tomorrow or the next day, we'll see. Um, because I wanna get the animals out of the tub and I want to clear this room out and this was the last redo of my tanks, and so everything from this point on will be new. So I'm excited. Ready to start putting in the land substrate. I've got the tank in. I'm putting it on the bottom level here on this dual rack, or actually it's triple rack. Um, <clears throat> hopefully the Fluvel um, filter that I have behind there will, uh, it's about at the same height. It's actually a little higher, so I'm a little concerned that that won't work, but we'll find out. Um, and then we'll have to figure out what we can do. But uh, anyways, um, I'm gonna start putting this substrate and these things back in the land area, and then I will start on the aquatic side. All right, um, jumping ahead a lot, actually. I put the substrate in, I added all the plants back. I didn't add any plants, all I did was add this moss. Um, I added the all the plants that were in here. There's java ferns, um, java moss, uh, these river, pebble, river stones, which are real river stones. I got them out of a creek. Um, I've got these bigger pieces of light slate, which kind of match the sides. I put a piece of driftwood, so there's a bunch of slate stacked up. Um, I put moss all over, and as you can see, I've got the water coming out of the bulkhead on the return, and it's moving the water, at least up to here. So I'm a little concerned, but I see the water actually moving right over here, um, just a little bit, but that's enough to not make it stagnant. So fill the rest in with moss. I think it looks pretty good. I've um, got the four nerites in here, java fern, anubius, um, really liking it. Um, and I have, I forget, those are golden something. I forget what they're called, but they were in my, the, the setup before too. Um, these plants are really cool and they also help filter the water, which I like. So, um, you know, I don't know how this, much the tiger salamanders will destroy this. So I guess we'll find out. Um, you know, I, they're not too bad, actually. The, you know, the other ones were way worse. The ones that are in that one are, you know, will tear it up. But uh, I've got the flu valve in the background. I'm going to put a Miss King on this over here, too. Um, probably not going to start it for a while until I, I fill up this rack. This is, as you can see here, um, it's three high. So that on top is going to be the bin for the water, which will actually go on the ground. And there'll be three 40-gallons high, and then I have another one here. So uh, these are my new custom-made cabinets that I had built, which I really like. Um, and as you can see, I've got the spot here again for the light so it doesn't get in the way, enough room to put the, the lid on. And then I'm gonna have the, put a double sprayer here to make sure that it keeps it moist. I'll probably cover some of that to make it a little bit more humid in here so the moss can grow. But uh, yeah, really, really liking this. I think it's a, um, you know, it's definitely, uh, 
a nice setup. I have the salamanders. I just fed the salamanders. I'm also going to put some springtails in there. Uh, make sure it's seated again. I didn't see too many when I took them out. So, uh, yeah, pretty happy with this water cleanup crew, water, land cleanup crew. Let's uh, add the salamanders here. Well, here are my two barred tigers. They are about, I don't know how long those are, maybe five and a half, six inches, something like that. Um, just ate some worms, so we're looking pretty chubby. Um, yep, so we're gonna put them in here and uh, let's do it. So let's take a look there. at what they're doing. Just put them in. He's making a beeline for that. And uh, so I don't know what yeah, they are watching just, <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. Some weird uh, screwing up the plants. That's what they're doing. Plants. That's cool. Yeah, not surprising. Um, these tiger salamanders are notorious for just screwing things up, but uh, which is why I made the water a little bit less this time. I was really hesitant to do the water feature, but I'm glad I did. Um, I've noticed that all the water is moving. Um, I think they're really going to like this one. Um, I think it's. I think a forty gallon is actually okay for both of them. Um, as they continue to grow, it gives them enough room. Particularly as one is just always in the water, no matter what. Uh, the other one's always on land, and one's always in the water. And um, you know, but this is great. I mean, I, I think the moss is going to grow. Um, like I said, I'm going to be hooking up a uh, Miss King, and I'm really just psyched with the way this one turned out. I mean, it was just a redo, so. Um, just really happy with it. And I know that um, this one right here is gonna really appreciate the water as you can see. He's already hiding in the water. This is what he does. He loves it. He's more of a stream salamander than a fossorial tiger salamander. I don't know why, but he is. He just likes to, it's what he likes. So I'm gonna give him what he wants. Um, and uh, you know, that's the one that's always on the land right there. He's really, you know, that one, that one really is uh, getting pretty fat. So I gotta watch out how much I feed him, but um, but yeah, this is great. Um, I'm really, really um, excited to start some new builds and I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, I've gonna, I'm going to have five new builds. I have enough room for five new animals, frogs and salamanders, at least one frog. And so appreciate you uh, supporting the channel. Like, subscribe, and I will be back to you soon with a new video.